Good morning, it's 7 o'clock, <laughs> 7 a.m. You've tuned into the Morning Devotion. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And we're here to encourage you through the Word so that you can be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Amen. Christ. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, I pray that your Word, Lord, would deposit seeds in our heart and bring change in our lives. Father, bring hope where there's despair. Lord, bring healing where there's sickness. Lord, bring encouragement where there is discouragement. Lord, thank you for the joy that you give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Randy's going to read a verse real quick while this jet flies overhead because we're in the flight path of Orlando <laughs> International Airport. So she's going to read really good and loud. It says, if in this <coughs> life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all men the most pitiable. pitiable. <laughs> I know in the other verse it says miserable. It says miserable. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna read that again, but this time with a little a a, a, a that? See, I can't even talk this morning. <laughs> Say miserable this time. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. That's good. Right there. Right there. Praise Paul God. said, "If this life is all there is." and everything that we do for Christ is only in this life, then we're most miserable. Because there's too much stuff to do in this life. <laughs> and if, it, if it's only this life, then we feel compelled to try to fit as much as we can in. But Jesus did say to lay your treasures up in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt. Today, I just want to talk a little bit about heaven. I want to talk not necessarily where it is, just a little few verses because what we know, we can base on scripture mm -hmm. that we know about this. So the first thing that I would like to establish is found in Genesis 1-1, <laughs> the very beginning of the Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So number one, it was created by God. It doesn't say where it is. It just <laughs> says that it was created by God. The word heaven, some places in scriptures, refers to the sky, where that jet. Those people are flying up in the heavens from our perspective. From their perspective, up would be even farther through the stratosphere. We're down here with loud, noisy cars, jets flying overhead, and that's the way that the world is. Instead of hearing the birds and the peacefulness, there's often so much commotion going on in people's lives that it's easy to get distracted from what matters. And what matters is our relationship with the Lord. Yes. Because our relationship with the Lord could very well determine our eternal destination. Amen. We're eternal beings. This is what it says in Revelation 21.4, that when we get to this place or where it is that there are certain things about it that we're not going to have. Revelation 21 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things are have passed, passed away. away. All the things that are, are miserable, all the things that are, are physically suffering, all the things that are depressing, all the things that, that you might be remorseful for and, and regretting and, and, and things that eat away at you are, are gonna be gone. Amen. So that would be a great place to be, Amen. wouldn't it? Or would you rather just stick around <laughs> and suffer through this life? <laughs> Not me, because it is more than we could know. I mean, we may read a hundred verses about heaven, <laughs> We may even find a testimony of somebody died in their description of what they saw, the light at the end of the tunnel, the, the angels, loved ones reading them beautiful music, a light that they couldn't describe. But this is it. This is just a small taste, a smidgen, a fraction of what it possibly could be like. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians 2.9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. God has something more prepared for you than you could ever conceive or comprehend. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wherever it is, heaven and eternity, it's going to be a place where there's going to be <laughs> the perfect gift 
for you. Amen. It is a destination. It is a place. This is what it says in Luke 23, 43. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That was Jesus on the cross with a thief who said, Remember me. And Jesus said, This day you will be with me in paradise. It's a destination. It's a place where we're going to go. And we should think about that because in reality, our eternity with God, or as, as we often put it, our eternity in heaven, is only one of two possible destinations. You have two places that you're going to go when you die. Some may think that they're just going to turn back into dirt, but the Bible says differently. This is what it says in Matthew 25, 46. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Two destinations, eternal punishment, not good, mm -hmm. or eternal life yes. with God, good. With God, good. With the place that there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more mm -hmm. tears, that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the very Amen. hearts of man, the things that God has prepared. That place versus a place where it says there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is what J.C. Ryle said, and this is what we're going to finish out with. You were placed here to train for eternity. Your body was only intended to be a house for your immortal spirit. It is flying into the face of God's purpose to do as many do, to make the soul a servant to the body, and not to the body a servant to the soul, and not the body a servant to the soul. This body, it's temporal. <laughs> Our soul is eternal. I would rather my body serve God <laughs> than try to get God to serve my soul and serve my body. <laughs> it's about service to Him. Two destinations. Today, won't you choose to take the destination for eternal life and ask Jesus into your life and your heart. Ask Him to forgive you for Amen. the things that you've done wrong. He paid the price. He did the work. All you have to do is accept it and believe. Thank you for joining us today. When you do that, you know what's going to be a little bit easier? To keep a praise, keep song, a praise in song in your heart. <laughs> and rejoicing, rejoicing in, in the, the Lord, Lord always. always. And again I say... Rejoice. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.